Hey, what's up, Vinyl Community? This is Nate again. Um, second video in, what, three days or something like that? I don't Who knows? Who's counting? Uh, it, <laughs> I'll try and get this and keep it as short as possible as I really want to go to bed. It's late, and I just got out of work, like, at midnight. And I've got stuff to do tomorrow. But anyhow, um... I, let's see, where to begin? This is mostly stuff I picked up uh, this past week. Um, uh, thrift stores. First, we go with the thrift store finds because they are the cheapest. Uh, one was like a little, it's like a little salvage cheap place. I don't know. She has a bunch of used stuff. And uh, I found a cool... Uh, Otis Redding 7-inch on Volt. Uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. I have not spun that one yet, but uh, I saw it and I had to pick it up because I love Otis Redding. And I knew the Volt label was highly collectible and um, that's pretty cool. I also got um, on Parkway, uh, the sleeves aren't the right ones. I'll probably try and See if I can find the sleeves that match the um, the record labels. Uh, this one is Surf Party by Chubby Checker and Twist It Up. Um, gotta love Chubby Checker. Anyhow, on to the LPs. Uh, first one I picked up, Songs of Chris Christopherson. Of course, it's from uh, 1977. It's a bit of a compilation. It doesn't say greatest hits, but it pretty much might as well be. Um, Help me make it through the night, and uh, actually, the Silver Tongue Devil is fantastic. It's an amazing song, um, as well as, of course, me and Bobby McGee are, is on it. Um, I also found this for, I think, a dollar. The best of the ink spots on DECA, and it's a mono pressing. Um, it's a little beat up, as is the sleeve, but it's ancient. It's the black DECA, or black and silver DECA label. Um, yeah, the ink spots, it's, I, was, I really like that. I, I was impressed. Um, let's see what else. Billy Preston, um, organ impresario, or, uh, you know, uh, Virtuoso. Played, of course, with the Beatles. That's where, uh, I guess, he shot into superstardom um, before he went and did some funky stuff in the 70s. But, uh, of course, yeah, everything's all Beatles all the time now with the 50th anniversary. Hey, and I'm getting... I love the Beatles. I... I grew up listening to the Beatles, uh, 1962 to 1966, the Red Album, that was, and actually the Blue Album too, but the Red Album first, that's what got me into them, and man, I, but it's like, enough, okay, and it's, enough's enough, it's everywhere, but uh, give it a rest for a little while, and get back into it, and you know, I'll start, list, I'll break up my copy of uh, Revolver, and start spinning that all the time. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Swing Revisited. Uh, blind Buy. Um, but uh, it's on the London uh, label, and it's uh, British pressing. Um, John Keating and his band. Uh, when the Saints go marching in, what did I say? Little Darling. Uh, Gary Lewis and the Playboys? I can't remember. Um, little darling, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not even gonna try and sing it. I remember the song. I just don't. Uh, oh, Mitch Ryder and Detroit Wheels. I know. Uh, Chris Dixie Lane Farm says he's not a big fan of Mitch Ryder and Detroit Detroit Wheels. Unfortunately, that's just that's unfortunate. That's just sad. Anyway, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but this is uh, Take a Ride in mono as well. I was highly impressed by finding that. It's on New Voice Records. Um, 
your voice. Uh, slightly scuffed. All of these um, from this one place were kind of scuffed, but there was there was some stuff there that I uh, um, that I hadn't seen before, and I really, really I thought you know I I should get this while I while I can. Um, more stuff. This came from a place called the Christian Women's Center in town. It's like a I don't know church affiliated. Uh, thrift store, charitable organization, or whatever. And normally I don't really find anything there, but <laughs> Christian music, and nothing wrong with it, but I just, I'm not a fan. I don't listen to it. Um, but I got some 80s cheese. And by 80s cheese, I mean cheese. And this is, um, I got two albums, both in the shrink wrap. Um, on Scotty Brothers Records, uh, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band, on the, and the Beaver Brown Band, did I say that? I don't know, it's really late and I, my, my brain's not working, but it's okay, um, yeah, uh, where Bruce Springsteen is here, and Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes are kind of here, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band are right here. Um, they did uh, the Eddie and the Cruiser soundtrack, which I enjoyed, and and they did the Part Two uh, soundtrack. Um, I I just wanted to have these in the collection because I have uh, always uh, enjoyed certain parts of the Eddie and the Cruiser soundtrack. Uh, going back, it brings back a lot of memories. When it came out, I was like eight or nine, and I, I think I ordered it through Columbia House and listened to it ad nauseum. But uh, I was, it was 99 cents. Hey, why not? Um, silver six eye pressing of Tchaikovsky in the Nutcracker Suite. And I'll see if I can try and not destroy this lovely uh, poly inner sleeve. Uh, Columbia Masterworks. Silver six up there. Uh, and it says on the record, non-breakable. Ha ha ha. We all know that's not true. Um, of course, through experience. I'd rather not find out, as this is a very lovely, lovely album in excellent, excellent shape. And I'm just stalling so I can put the thing back in its uh, sleeve. Anyway. Uh, something bizarre. The United States Army Recruiting Command presents Radio the Greatest Sound on Earth. No idea what's on this. Uh, it's not even listed on Discogs. I, it's just, uh, one of those things that, it's just, uh, uh, one of those oddities that'll go on the oddities shelf directly next to, uh, Buddhist uh, monk chants. It's something. Oh, and I love Sinatra, so I got uh, Robert Robert Farnan and his orchestra plays the hits of Sinatra. So that should be interesting to get into. Spyro Gyra, a little bit of jazz with the MCA. Uh, oops, the uh, MCA um, etching on the cover. Um, City Kids, smooth '80s type jazz. Billy Colton, a, f a funky side of things from 1975. Isn't that man? It's a great, great jazz. Anyway, uh, a touch of Latin, Mr. Ackerbilk and the Leon Young String Chorale. Uh, I'm starting to. I'm trying to broaden my horizons. Coming with the. Uh, you know, with the world music uh, type stuff. Ooh, coming up on 10 minutes. Gotta speed this up. Um, this is phenomenal. This is, I, I listened to this the other day. Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow. Cubs win. Holy cow. Um, the age of Electronicus. It's uh, the Moog synth synthesizer. Synth synth oh. Synthesizer works of uh, Dick Hyman. Um, look at that 
fucking thing. My God, it's massive. Look at that. I, there's no way. I, wow. You know, that's like, what, 60... I want to say 69 or 70 because there's a Obladi Oblada on it, as well as a couple of uh, other late 60s hits. But it's oh, it's fantastic, and there's a couple of original uh, Richard Hyman so uh, uh, pieces. I don't want to call them songs because they're not. But uh, there's just like uh, ambient and w white noise washed with just. Uh, cool synthesizers. It's just so bizarre and fun. It's just, it's really great. Um, let's see. Oh, and this, I got a really, I went out on a really good dig, uh, Craigslist dig, and uh, this guy was a collector, a collector's collector, if you know what I mean. He had some amazing stuff, and I it was a little bit out of my price range, but then he had some stuff that I was like, yeah, I will shell out, um, I will shell out a little bit of extra money for this stuff. Um, the Rascals, this is, uh, after they were the Young Rascals, this is, um, this is called C, and it's, uh, very psych- and it's funky as all get out. It's very good. Uh, this one I like. This one I, I saw and I, I thought, I, this can't be real. It's weird. Um, it's some kind of uh, specially priced two record set. Or it was 40 years ago, whenever it came out. But uh, it's the Beach Boys. It's a two record set. Um... One of which is Pet Sounds, recorded in mono, um, and I listen to it, and it's spectacular. It's unbelievable. And the other album is Carl and the Pas Carl and the Passions, so tough. Uh, Carl Wilson, of course, the uh, one of the other Wilson brothers in the Beach Boys. Have not listened to that. Pet Sounds sounds as amazing as ever. I have it on CD. Have had it for many years. But this copy is... Blew me away. Like hearing it for the first time. Uh, the guy had a jazz collection... Uh, unparalleled to anything I had seen as far as in person. Going to, you know... You know, digging or whatever. Um... But I picked up uh, some Miles Davis in person at the Blackhawk, San Francisco, Volume One. Uh, yeah, he had on this five bucks. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I will take it. And it's it's fantastic. I listened to that the other day, as did I. I listened to this uh, Spooky Tooth, Witness, um, some great. Uh, Psych era bluesish type stuff. <laughs> Before I left, I was almost out the door, and I said, uh, "Just a shot in the dark." Do you get any uh, Jimi Hendrix? And he was like, "Hmm, hold on." So he opened up the door to like a closet, and he had some more boxes of records off to the side, stuff that he said that he was going to sell on eBay for uh, more. Because I did see in those boxes there were some jazz records in there and there were some albums that in there that were just uh cream of the crop like m several hundred dollars a piece um like stuff that i will never i will, i don't really think i will own he did however whip this out it's Jimi hendrix uh gigantes del pop it's a Spanish pressing on Polydor Records. It's a comp compilation from uh, here. It says 1981. I've done research and said that it also came out in '86. I think I'm going to go with '81 on this. But it's Polydor. It's got the "Made in Spain" label on it. Um, it's got "Hey Joe." It's got the standards. Uh, 
but it's it was really listening weird listening to it for, at first um, because I'm used to of course like smash hits and uh, experience Hendrix or oh wait what was it? other greatest hits compilations and this was um, it was bizarre because they were all out of place and I was like whoa wait a minute man you just freaking me out but it's it sounds fantastic it's the pr it's the pressing is just superb superb then I listened then I um went on to Discogs and I saw what else was in this series because this is volume one uh, this isn't even listed on it apparently this is very rare um, but there's a Velvet Underground uh, uh, a, like volume 15 or whatever it is it's a Velvet Underground compilation and if I can get my hands on that ooh, yeah it's on like Donkey Kong or Radon Chong uh, Albert King, there's a slight warp in, uh, the first track on both sides. It's kind of warped, but it doesn't affect the play, and it sounds awesome. OG. Uh, King of the Blues Guitar. Born Under a Bad Sign, Cold Feet. Uh, I Love Lucy, his guitar, of course. Um, Oh Pretty Women. Pretty Woman. Man. Just a classic album. Just phenomenal. Um, more Miles. Milestones. Miles Davis. Uh, let's. I'm going to try and speed this up here because this is getting a wee bit long. Um, Freddie Hubbard, Polar AC. The Doors. Hell yeah. Waiting for the Sun. He. He had these individually priced because he knew he was going to sell them. And I was more than glad to pay 7 bucks for this because I'm trying to build up my Doors collection and it's quite thin. Um, uh, Fleetwood Mac. This was post-Peter Green, pre-Lindsey uh, Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. Um, oh, God, what was his? I'm trying to figure out the name of it. Uh, Bob Welch, of course. Bob Welch, uh, Sentimental Lady, or is it, uh, yeah, Sentimental, I don't know. I can't remember the song he had. He had a huge solo hit, but he, he was on this album. And, uh, this one, of course, not one of their better known works. It's just sort of, it, it was, it was before, it was after Bear Trees, of course, which was a phenomenal blues uh, psych uh, classic. Um, this is incredible. Um, four lessons in jazz. Uh, the jacket is in rough shape. It needs to be. I I will probably end up taping it together. But it's look at that. That's spectacular. I mean uh, the the Charles Mingus. That's what I'm telling. You. Look at the you know look who's on this. Charles Mingus. <laughs> Uh, four Lessons in Jazz, Johnny Richards, Art Blakey, um, yeah, uh, definitely. Also, haha, <laughs> um, I had a copy of this before, uh, and then I sent it out as VCLT to Craig, who also had a copy, but then the next day, after I mailed it out, I found it, uh, this guy had it, and I was like, well, hell yeah, I guess I'll... Yeah, I'll pick it up. Sure. I liked it enough the first time. Why wouldn't I like it the second time? Oh, this was uh, spectacular. It's a little worn out here. It's kind of tore up on the uh, in the corner, but bad finger, straight up. I had just found no dice, like, the week before for 50 cents. 50, 50 cents for a bad, rec bad finger record? Are you shitting me? Yes. Um... And this one, too, it was, um, I mean, Baby Blue, Day After Day, you can't, yeah, that's a, yeah, uh, Sealed, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, um, Hard Promises, I will buy anything with Tom Petty's name on it, I swear, uh, Hums of 
the Love and Spoonful with Summer in the City. My favorite Love and Spoonful song. Uh, not necessarily my favorite John Sebastian song. He had some really good stuff when he was solo now. Uh, Miles Davis, Porgy and Bess. And let's see what else we got. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Miles. Miles Davis. And a new Miles Davis quintet on Original Jazz Classics, the OJC label. Um, this was a reissue of an earlier album. Um, Coltrane is on this. Paul Chambers is on the... This is like a mock-up of the Prestige label. Um, which was originally released, what, I don't know, 10 years before. But, um, apart from all the jazz, the kick-ass jazz records um, that I picked up, um, there's one standout wrong. There's two standout albums um, that I picked up that day. Uh, this one, Traveling Wilburys, Volume 3, picked up for one dollar yes yeah any yeah she's my baby inside out uh seven deadly sins god this is such a great album i just i wow man it, of course it's called volume three because those guys loved if any loved anything it was irony it was their second album and they called it volume three go figure and I also picked up uh, Chuck Berry's Golden Hits, uh, Golden Decade Volume 2. Uh, it's from the hits, sort of lesser known hits between 55 and 66. Uh, the, the jacket is absolutely jacked, but the vinyl is very nice. Very nice. Great success. Also, um, Roy Ayer's Ubiquity. A little jazz, more jazz, um, and, oh, Elvis Costello, My Name is True, with Allison on it, and the piece de resistance, this is the one that got me, uh, this was the one I was pretty psyched about, uh, I have a stereo copy of this one, but this is mono, the two eye pressing of his, fir his first volume of greatest hits, mono. So that's everything I got uh, within the past what two weeks, maybe. I, I might have gotten a couple other things, but here and there, but. Uh, I feel like if I go a day without digging, I'm, I, it's like a day without a fucking cigarette. Jeez, it's, ooh, I, got, I got the fever. Man. Anyhow, oh yeah, one of my uh, turntables shit the bed. So, uh, I think I'm going to hold off on buying vinyl for a little while so I can save some cash and get a real decent one. Probably... Uh, like an audio technica or something like that. I'll really have to do some research. And um, if you are watching this and you would have some advice, don't have that much scratch to uh, pick up a uh, really, really like an audio file type thing, you know, like seven, eight hundred dollar uh, turntable. But if you uh, have any advice for you know maybe up to like 250 300 dollar range i'm looking at uh and below there are uh room for comments go ahead and um get me your uh suggestions um what else was i gonna i was gonna say something else but i can't remember so i'm just gonna stop the video here right at 25 minutes and say ciao have a good night or a day, or whenever it is you're watching, I don't know, who knows.